Congratulations to all the team leaders. Uh, awards like this, celebrations, moments like this are to be cherished. And uh, congrats to each and every one of you that have been involved with this great organization. Um, I'm expecting there's probably going to be some billboards left on these tables, but the good news is Dr. Ed Young's here today. Now, you're not the only guy with your face on a billboard. I got one over here now, you know. <laughs> but I do want to say thanks to Dr. Young for being here today um, in this job that I have with the Astros. There's times where, where everything doesn't always go the way you think it's going to go, and it never fails that I just get a random phone call from Dr. Young to, to pick my spirits up. So thank you very much for being here today. Um, so why am I here today? Why am I visiting with you guys? Um, Jim gave me a call on the phone and said, hey, I want to come talk to you about rebuilding together. I want to bring Bill Brown. This is a, a charity that, that Bill and I are involved with. And I had known Jim from the ballpark, but really didn't know anything about rebuilding together or anything uh, that he was up to. And so uh, I kind of laughed and chuckled. I said, yeah, you know, rebuilding together. That's kind of what I feel like I've been doing here with the Astros the last couple years is trying to rebuild this place. So I said, yeah, come on, come on by. And um, it really became full circle with what this organization is, who's involved with this organization. Uh, when I started to hear the story about how 34 years ago, Rob Mossberger Jr. and some folks started this organization to make Houston a better place and to give back to the community. And it was ironic that when I got the job with the Astros, and I grew up uh, a big Astro fan. My dad played for the Astros. I ran around the dome every spot, and I have stories that would get me in big trouble of things that we did as kids with Jose Cruz Jr. and another group of modern-day rugrats that uh, all grew up over there. But Rob reached out to me right after I got this job and called and said, hey, I want to go to lunch with you and Milo Hamilton. Rob's been a big supporter of the Astros and a big baseball fan and really just kind of welcomed me to Houston. And so I felt like it was really serendipity that – here I am volunteering to come speak at an event and learning more about rebuilding together, and it's, an, it's a, a group that Rob started. So I felt like definitely this was something that I wanted to do. So um, I said, what's the next step, Jim? And so he wanted to bring over Tim Gregg and Danny Britton to my office, and I saw Danny was in the back today, and they came over, and, and I watched the video, and you guys have probably all seen the video. There's, there's a lot of them on YouTube. Um, and it just really started to sink in what a tremendous organization this is, what good works that this group of people are doing in our community. And the comparisons kind of started to sink in. And, and Jim kind of laughed about it a little bit about we're rebuilding and this group is rebuilding. But when you think about it, the groups really, really are very similar. I mean, the Astros, we've been around 53 years. In fact, this is the 50th year of Astros baseball. We were Colt 45s for a couple years, but this is the 50th year of the name Astros and, and of course rebuilding together Houston's been around for 34 years so we both have a little bit of staying power we, we've been here and we're going to continue to be here um, now some of the houses that, that you guys work on as team leaders have seen better days um, and some people might say the Astros have seen better days so there was a little bit it's a stretch but there's a little comparison in there but the real comparison was that we both have a new vision for what we want for the future for our organizations and so what I thought I would do is give you guys a little bit of, of a peek behind the curtain of kind of what it is we're doing with the Houston Astros and then lead into to what it is you guys are, are doing with rebuilding together. So <clears throat> before you go into kind of our vision for the future, I, I just want to share a little bit of the past. I know there's a lot of folks here that, that love the Astros and have been involved with baseball, um, but this organization was started in 1962. We were the Colt 45s, and of course Judge Hoffines brought Major League Baseball to Texas, and, and my dad was in high school at the time, and that was just a big deal for this, for this community. And of course, in 1965, the Astrodome opened up, the eighth wonder of the world, and the team became the Houston Astros. And people came from all over the world, the great events that were held in the Astrodome, and it was tremendous. But really, from the 1960s until 1980, the team didn't really ever make the playoffs or really even have very many winning seasons. And so it was kind of 20 years of futility. But then in 1980, the Astros had the first ever team, and I'm proud to say my dad was a part of that organization, that made it to the playoffs and got one game from the World Series. In 81, they went back. In 86, they had another great series with the Mets. And it really set the tone and changed the way people looked at the Astros. And that led to the success of the Killer Bees. Bagwell, BGO, eventually Berkman, Derek Bell, I guess we'll throw him in there. His last name was with a B. But from the mid-'90s through the mid-2000s, there really was not an organization 
probably outside of maybe the Braves, maybe the Yankees, that won more games than the Houston Astros. There were playoff appearances in there. There were 100-game win season in 1998. And, of course, the year 2005, everyone remembers because uh, the Astros went to the World Series. And so then where did things kind of go wrong? Well, in the late 2000s, it, it can turn quickly in this business. And that's why when you get a good run, you have to enjoy every single moment of it. And we've seen that with the economies in this community. Uh, you just got to enjoy them when they're there. But in the late 2000s, we started missing on a couple of drafts. Had a couple of drafts we didn't sign our guys and, and our scouts missed on them. And then all of a sudden we had a couple of free agents that we spent some money on. And those guys didn't hit. And then you had some key injuries to our stars. And then, you know, the team started to be sold. And that, that went into decision-making of management. And uh, there were some moves made that put the TV uh, deal into, into motion that ended up kind of giving us the CSN. And so in 2011, when Jim Crane bought the club, um, we were in need of a new vision. It was time to, to rechange the way we were doing business and start over. And uh, Jim Crane had a saying that when he bought the Houston Astros in the winter of 2011, that we were in the 30-30 club. And does anybody know what the 30-30 club is in baseball? Okay, there we go. Normally it's 30 home runs and 30 steals. It shows power and speed. Well, we were in the wrong 30-30 club. We were 30 worst major league team. We were in last place, not where you want to be. And we had the 30th worst minor league system. So we were rock bottom. You could not get any worse than we were. And so our ownership group and, and our management group really said, you know, let's examine this thing. What do we have to do to be have a correct financial model that will enable us to have success. And the decision was made to bring in Jeff Luna, our general manager from the St. Louis Cardinals. And Jeff uses a advanced analytics model to try to find value in players. And so we realized very, very early on that we're not going to be the Yankees, we're not going to be the Dodgers, we're not going to have the money that those guys have, that we're going to have to be smarter and we're going to have to to change the way we're doing business. Another thing is we, we moved to the American League. We had had a whole roster of guys all the way down our system. And we keep about 200 players in our system. There's a major league, a triple A, a double A. There's four levels of A ball and then several levels of rookie ball. In fact, we have two teams in the Dominican Republic of kids that play that eventually will come over here. So they were built for National League Baseball. We had to rebuild that organization. And so basically, when you, you add all that up, it means total rebuild. And you've heard the saying, it's ugly making the sausage. You don't want to see the sausage being made. Well, we were making the sausage on TV and in front of the fans' eyes every single day. And, and it was ugly. And so I'm just, I wrote down a couple things here. First thing, we started trading major league players for minor league talent. It's the only way you can rebuild your system. One big leaguer goes, a lot of times, a fan favorite, and we get four or five prospects back. So we started doing that. Um, the guys we were putting on the field were not big league caliber players 2011, 2012. So we lost a lot of games, but that meant we had high draft picks and we stocked up a lot of first round draft picks. Um, we had to fight this TV fight out because we had to secure our television revenues to be able to compete, to sign free agents. Um, we had to grow within, from within, organically. We couldn't afford to go out and just chase whoever the hot commodity was. We had to have instructors, and that meant that we added to our player development staff. We added more minor league teams. We added more coaches so that when we spent this money on these guys, we had the right resources to develop these guys properly. And then we had to strategically sign free agents that fit our model. Not guys that we were going to have for seven, eight years that some of these teams are doing, but that help us with our core group of players that we have created from within. And so 2011 to 13, it was three 100 lost seasons. U-G-L-Y ugly. We all know it. It was bad. But in 2014, we started to see the improvement. I'm proud to say we had a 20-game improvement. Actually, 19. I'm going to round up. 20-game improvement over the year before. That's, that's remarkable. It's, it's unheard of in baseball. It's only happened a few times before. Um, we won the silver boot from the Rangers, our team to the north that we're now playing. We won more games against them head-to-head, -head, and the silver boot now resides at Minute Maid Park, and we don't want to give it back anytime soon. Uh, we finished fourth. Hey, it's better than last. You know, it was a, it, we were not the worst team in baseball. In fact, we're slowly eking up to that middle tier, and we want to be in that upper tier because today a third of the teams make the playoffs with a wild card, and so we think that's a realistic goal in the very short term. And so you saw some of our emerging stars, all three guys – came from within. I'm going to start with George Springer. He was only up part of the year, but he hit 20 home runs as a rookie, and he had one of the best months of anybody to ever wear an Astros uniform before he got hurt. We have a kid named Dallas Keuchel, who 
uh, through several complete games, had an ERA uh, under three, won an American League gold glove at pitcher. We've never had that before. We developed him from within. And then, of course, Jose Altuve, what a year. Breaking Craig Biggio's all-time single-season hit record, he shattered it. He had 225 hits. He was the American League stolen base champ, and he was Major League Baseball's batting champ, uh, something that we had never had happen in the 52 years of Astros baseball. So very positive signs that this plan is working and that we're going in the right direction. So what does 2015 have in store for us? Well, as you guys know, we've made a lot of moves. We're ready to win right now. I'm not saying that we're going to be in the playoffs right now, but we're ready to have a winning team that is in the black, not in the red, and we want to play meaningful baseball in September. We want to be in the conversation come September so that we can get in this dance. And so it starts with our new manager. We brought in a guy named A.J. Hinch. Uh, A.J. is a very young, dynamic guy from Stanford, played on the Olympic team from Oklahoma. Don't hold that against him. Uh, he was a football player, a tremendous athlete. He's been a major league manager. He was a major league manager at 34 years old. Uh, he's been in the front office with the Padres before, farm director. This guy has range. And with the young players we have, we think he's the perfect guy to kind of mix old school baseball with the new age analytics. So we think he's the, the key to, to getting these guys to play. Um, we went out and spent some money. We brought in free agents, Jed Lowry and, and Nishak Gregerson, some guys to sure up the bullpen. Uh, Colby Rasmus, a home run threat in left field. We made some trades, brought in a guy named Evan Gaddis from Atlanta, got Hank Conger from the Angels, uh, brought in Valbuena from the Cubs. Um, these young stars are now going to be in their sophomore season and the second time around the league. We're expecting even bigger things out of them. And we had some guys that we rebuilt last year. Uh, McHugh and Sip are two pitching prospects or pitching uh, starter and a reliever that we found basically on the trash heap and our guys were able to rehab and bring them back to prominence. And then we have lots of more prospects coming. Actually, I saw Mark Appel today at a breakfast event and we're finally stacked up with major league bona fide players at every position and guys in the minor leagues that are ready to come up and take their job. So we feel like we're on the on the verge of getting back. And there's a level of excitement as we go into spring training, we're only two weeks away, that I've not seen in a long time with the Houston Astros. People realize that this plan is working. And so if you were to say, you know, Reed, what's your goal with the Houston Astros? Well, you know, I, we want to win. We want to win championships. That's, of course, what we're doing. But really what we want to do is we want to bring joy to people's lives. And if we're out there and we're making Houston proud and we're bringing joy to people's lives, then you know what? We're going to win the ball games. That's part of it. And that's what I see with rebuilding together uh, Houston is that you guys are bringing joy to people's lives through the good work you're doing, from your dedication, from the money you've donated. And so when you look at, at who we are as an organization and what we mean to the community, winning matters because when we win, we all feel proud to live here. Um, but it's more about everything we do in the community. Uh, what are we doing to give back? What are we doing when you come to the ballpark? What type of customer service are we giving? What are our players? Are there being role models to my three kids and your kids and your grandkids? Um, are we giving you guys quality entertainment to where when you come to the game or you watch Brownie at home that you can sit with your family and not be ashamed at what you're going to see and feel like there's lessons for life or things that you can teach your kids through this great game of baseball? And are we making a difference? And so I will tell you, we're not there yet. We're not. We're working on it, but we're not there yet. We have very high standards for ourselves. We have lofty goals. And if you said, Reed, what's your goal? I want to be the gold standard. I don't want to just be the best in baseball. I want to be the best in, in this community of Houston, and I want to be uh, the best in life at everything, full 360 with our organization. That's our goal. And so, hey, there's going to be tough times. None of this stuff's easy. It hasn't been easy to get you know, where you guys are today over 34 years. It's not going to be easy to get to 700. Uh, there's going to be bumps in the road, and that's when doubt sets in. And you start asking yourself, can I do it? Can we do it? And you got to make tough decisions along the way, and you have to have a plan and stay the course. And I can say I really, you go through life and you don't know why you're prepared to do something, but then something happens and you realize you were. And growing up in the game of baseball and having a dad that pitched 27 years in the major leagues, um, I got to see and hear and be around some of the best coaches, the best teachers, some of the top people in their field. And then having worked in this game of baseball now almost 20 years, there's a saying that my dad gave me early on in life that has stuck with me. And he used to always say, Reed, don't let the failure of your last pitch ruin the success of your next one. And I think that's what we need to take away is that, look, it's not going to all go the way you want it to go. But when you do have that failure, 
learn from it, move on, and start focusing on the success the next time. And so that's the bottom line for us, is that we have a plan with the Houston Astros. We're sticking with that plan. Uh, we think we're going to be back very quickly, but there's a good chance that there'll be some bumps in the road. And we had it last year with having to make a change in manager. And we had it with having to move a couple guys out and bring in some new guys this offseason. And so when I think about what Rebuilding Together is doing, serving 365 families, a person a day with the folks in this room, that's amazing. And doubling that to 700, that is a lofty goal and a lofty vision. It can be done. We all know it can be done. But it's going to be a challenge, and it's going to take everybody in here setting those goals, and then creating and executing that plan. And I'll leave you guys today with a, with a story. Um, we're actually in the process of making a movie right now about a guy on our team, Jose Altuve. And some of you may have heard the, the story of Jose Altuve. I'm going to start by saying Jose Altuve in the program is five foot six. In real life, he's probably five foot five. And I have a picture with him, I'll show you if you catch me, in New York, and I look like Shrek, a giant, standing next to this guy. And he's, you know, whole, here he is. He's just won the Major League batting title. There's no reason that Jose Altuve should be a Major League Baseball player, much less the best hitter in baseball. Um, and it all started when he was 16 years old. He's Venezuelan, and he went to an Astros tryout camp. And for a long time, the Astros, we dominated Venezuela. We had an academy in Venezuela. We had all these players, and I could name them all, came out of Venezuela. And so we had this, this camp, and we had 200 kids show up, some of the best players in Venezuela that wanted to be Houston Astros. And Jose came, and our folks worked everybody out that day, and at the end of the day, they kept 20 kids to scrimmage and to try to decide that maybe one or two of these kids would get signed and get to be professionals at 16 years old. And Jose did not make the cut. He was sent home. <clears throat> and Jose's dad told him, he came in dejected, and he said, look, I didn't raise a son to be a quitter. If you want to be a baseball player, you put your uniform back on and you go tomorrow back to that camp and you don't tell them no. So here are the guys the next day. They're all stretching, getting ready, 20 guys. But really there's 21, but you just missed him because he kind of <laughs> settled in and they, they divvy up teams and you guys are over here and you guys are over here. And he just went with one of the teams and now he's sitting on the bench. Well, they start the game and finally about the fifth inning, somebody's like, "What? hey, we told you to go home. And he said, I came, I want to be a baseball player. And the guys with the Astros liked it enough that they let him stay in the dugout. And at the very end of the game, they gave him one at bat and he got a hit. They said, come back tomorrow, kid. Next day, he got a couple of hits. They said, come back the next day. He ended up getting like six, eight, ten, I don't know what the number is. It'll come out in this movie that we're making. Hits in a row. <clears throat> the Astros ended up signing him. And had he gone home that day and said, no, I'm going to do something else because I was told no, we would never have this great story of Jose Altuve. So we're going to look for a documentary. We're making it ourselves with Major League Baseball Productions, and it'll be out on MLB Network and Root Sports Southwest. But... Uh, that, that's the story to go home with today, is that if Jose Altuve can do it, uh, definitely rebuilding together Houston can do it. Good luck to you guys. Thank you.